So welcome to chapter zero of Elementary Statistics with Computers. This is Dr. Miller, howdy. Um, and we're gonna go over chapter zero, which is kind of a general overview of what is covered in this class. And these lecture slides were produced for me by our textbook. So in chapter zero, what we're gonna cover is how data is obtained and where and they're obtained and why that matters. We're also going to discuss why we always need to look at the data without making assumptions of the group as a whole. We need to make sure we always look at every single piece of data. We need to understand that there is variation everywhere, variation meaning differences. And we also need to look at what lies ahead. So when getting started, how does SoundScan know what's hot in popular music? Maybe not SoundScan, maybe let's call this Spotify. How does Spotify know what's hot in popular music? How do they know how to put together like the perfect playlist? Because my playlists after listening to Spotify for years are just like chef's kiss. Also, how do we know if hormone therapy is appropriate after menopause? Like how do we know whether or not to give patients medication? Well, all of these can be answered by collecting data and calculating statistics. Another example could be, what are the extent, cause, and possible solutions to global climate change? We have proven statistically significantly that humans have caused climate change, so we could test what some um, solutions could be to help reverse or slow climate change. All of these require statistics, and statistics is the science of learning from data. Now, data are numbers, but it's really important that you, your number has a unit. So let's say you have a baby and I say, congratulations, your baby weighs 8.5. 8.5 what? 8.5 bananas? 8.5 kilograms? Because I'll tell you what, if it was 8.5 kilograms, because one kilogram is about two pounds, that's a, that's a pretty big baby. Right? That would be statistically significant. That'd be an outlier, which we'll talk about more in chapter one and two. So data are numbers with context. Those numbers have a meaning. I could say, oh, I have seven. Seven what? Seven cats? Seven plants? Seven cookies? Delicious, right? So our numbers need a context. Also, we need to make sure that we're developing like our statistics gut instinct, right? We have to use our human judgment and our statistical st tools, such as graphs and calculations, in order to interpret this data, right? In this class, we'll be working with real data. So if something feels off, like stomach, like, mm, this just doesn't feel quite right, it's probably not. It's also important to note that how data were obtained matters. We're gonna go over different sampling methods in the future, um, but there's two different types of studies that can be conducted, observational studies and experimental studies. So observational studies are when we are just looking at a group. We aren't giving them a treatment. So in early hormone replacement studies, like we were just observing, we weren't giving them any uh, medication. But there sometimes, especially when medical settings are lurking or another word is confounding, confounding variables. Um, this is such as like education and affluence of patient, zip code, like all those things lead to greater life expectancies and less medical issues. There are also uh, ex uh, have more like experimental studies right, um, where we gave them a treatment, that treatment could be therapy or medicine, uh, and they can have the results where they find a positive outcome or they find no outcome, right? And both are good for us to know, right? Um, so it's important to share that information. But there's a lot of complex relationships between variables, and we're gonna look at how to explore those as this course goes on. Again, today, this is a lot of information, but it's really just an overview. So why don't we just always do experiments? A, sometimes you can't, it's not ethical, right? What if we wanna test if heroin users were more likely to, uh, you know, commit crimes 
right? We can't just give people heroin to see if they go commit a crime. Like we can't, that's not ethical. We can't do that. It also isn't always necessary, right? Well-designed observational studies such as sample surveys or census, right? We'd had the census in 2020, can yield really high quality information if done well. And well-designed doesn't necessarily mean you need a large number of respondents, right? It just means that you need a representative sample. Some samples aren't gonna be representative. So like, if you're gonna like ask Annie in the newspaper, your grandparents have, right? But she would often survey her readers. And that's not a really good sample because everybody who, only people who read her column would respond to that survey. Next, I wanna remind you to always look at the data, right? So here's an example of a graph. We've got votes for Gore versus votes for Buchanan. And if I had just made a table of the votes for Gore compared to the votes for Buchanan, in all those numbers, if it was just like number after number after number after number, it would've been really hard to tell that Palm Beach County was an outlier. Like why did so many more people vote for Buchanan than, than Gore, right? Like why is there such, such a difference? Also pay attention to the scale. I don't love that this scale is so, so different. So friendly reminder that a few cheerfully chosen graphs are often more instructive than great piles of numbers. And we're gonna be covering that more in chapter one. Another thing to note is that variation is everywhere. Let's look at gas prices from 1991 to mid 2019. So when I started driving in like 2008, it was the most expensive gas had ever been. Well, now we're in 2020 to, oh my gosh, I forgot two years. And it's way up there, right? So there is gonna be some natural variation in the market right here. The variation was definitely more affected by the economy and the goings on in the world. Um, than say um, the gauge of water in a lake over a year, right? It's gonna be higher during the rainy season and lower during the dry season. And that would kind of change more rhythmically. So because variation is everywhere, we need to keep in mind that conclusions can be uncertain. So for example, uh, the efficacy of the HPV vaccine was 98%. But when we construct a confidence interval, it has kind of a much wider range. So you have to be careful because it varies uh, with population. And statistics gives us a way to talk about uncertainty that is used and understood by statistically literate people everywhere. And if you're a good uh, statistician, you can make sure it's um, understood by all. And variability and uncertainty, right? We can't be 100% positive. We're always like 99, 95%. They're inescapable and they're just part of statistics. So here's what lies ahead as we move forward through this semester. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure by the end of the semester, we have a working knowledge of the ideas and tools of practical statistics, right? I want you to be able to calculate statistics, make graphs, but I also want you to be able to interpret uh, data you see in the media and research papers and things like that. So here are our three main areas. We're gonna look at data analysis. That's the first half of this course almost. Then we're gonna look at data production and eventually statistical significance. So that might not mean a lot right now, but that's when we're gonna do hypothesis testing and analysis of variance and chi-squared tables. So stay tuned. It's also important to know that doing statistics is just more than manipulating numbers. We're not p-hacking. You'll learn about that more in discussion board too. We aren't p-hacking, right? What it is in order to do statistics, we need to state our problem in its real world context, plan our specific statistical work to make sure we can actually answer it, solve the problem by making all the necessary graphs and calculations, and conclude um, by explaining our findings and what they say about the real world and hopefully explaining them and expressing them in a way that's easy for consumers to interpret um, and understand. And we'll get started with that in chapter one.